The Intelligent Money British GT Championship is having fun in the sun this weekend. We are on the Algarve. We're at Portimao, and it is another new circuit for the championship. It's another of those flyaway events for the teams, and it promises to be for a three-hour race. Absolutely fantastic. Welcome, then, to Portimao. Welcome to the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. Welcome also, Steph Wentworth, who's going to be in the pit lane. And there are worse places to be at the moment than in the sunshine of Portugal, aren't there? Exactly. I mean, I'm sure the weather is not so ni nice in the UK right now, so it's very nice that we've been able to fly across the sea here and come to Portsmouth. Absolutely. Uh, you're going to be busy for three hours, so... As well, I upstairs have a break for the moment. I'm going to go for a walk. This is a rare chance to be on the grid. So Ollie, my cameraman, is going to come with me and we're going to see who we can find. Now, here's a man we need to talk to. Stefan Rattel has been racing this weekend. More importantly, happy birthday. Thank you. It's beautiful to spend your birthday <laughs> on such a beautiful racetrack with such a beautiful grid. And also, I'm just out of my race car, so it's been a, a very good day. And a podium yesterday, yeah. so I couldn't be happier than that. And look at this grid as well, fantastic. You must be very proud of the, the state British GT is in. I mean, British GT is, is a runaway success. I mean, it's yeah. been like this year on year on year. We suffered a bit for the two COVID years, and then it bounced back to where it was before. The competition is great, a perfect split between GT3 and GT4. It's like the perfect championship for us. <laughs> In all our collections, it's a, it's a good boy of the family. Long may it continue. Stefan, happy birthday. Enjoy the race. Uh, who else can we go and find? Barwell Motorsport is worth uh, venturing to. Let's head this way uh, because uh, the Barwell team tend to excel when it comes to strategy. He says looking for... Mark Lemmer, who's the team principal, can't find him. Let's grab a driver instead. Quickly, Sandy Mitchell is standing over here. Um, what are your chances three hours ahead of you? Uh, well, if we look at the three-hour races we've done the last few years, we'd say quite good. But obviously, a new circuit to British GT. Temps are extremely high today, probably the hottest of the three days. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting. Uh, these races are always a little bit about the strategy and the safety car calls and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. It's a little bit into the unknown. We've not raced here before, but I think all the drivers are loving it. I mean, yeah. it's an amazing location for the families to come to, and uh, the track's just something else. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's going to be fun. The Century Motorsport GT3 BMW M4 is another potential winning car this afternoon, and it's to be driven by Darren Lung and Dan Harper. Dan, let's talk about the circuit first of all, because it's a circuit that's relatively new to most people on the grid, but there's an awful lot in it. Lots of elevation, lots of corners as well. Real challenge for a driver. Yeah, like you say, lots of elevation, high-speed corners, tight hairpins. Um, and very like blind braking zone, so it's tricky, um, especially for, for the AM drivers that maybe haven't a lot of experience here. Um, so even for me it's difficult, um, and I have a bit of experience here from, from last year in Preventic. Um, so yeah, it's a difficult one, the temperatures are high, um, thankfully the heat wave hasn't hit yet, um, so it's, it's still bearable. Um, but yeah, it's going to be a, a tricky race and it's, uh, it's a really fun circuit. This long pit straight is obviously a very fast part of the circuit, but then you've got a hard braking zone at the end. Three hours of racing, how much of an issue are brakes going to be come that last half an hour? So? Yeah, we're definitely going to have to take care of them and keep them in the back of the mind. Um, for sure, there's, like you say, loads of hard braking zones uh, from high speed areas. Um, so we're really going to have to take care of that. It's also hard on the tyres. Um, so maybe up to an hour stint at certain points, depending on safety cars, if they if they stay stay away. Um, so it's uh, definitely a lot of things to think about, and uh, it's it's a long race. The rolling lap is underway. Let's quickly look at the start drivers and how they line up. Miguel Ramos is on pole. James Cotting alongside, ahead of Ian Loggy and Sean Bowles with Darren Lund and Andrew Howard on the third row. Mark Radcliffe is alongside Mark Sanson. Then you've got Mark Smith and Matt Topham on the next row ahead of Chris Hart and John Ferguson, winner last time out at Snetterton. He's ahead of Kevin Say and Ian Campbell with the GT3 part of the grid, rounded out by Lucky Carer, who wasn't here up until this morning, so he had to start at the back anyway. And uh, Tim Kresic, uh, who's got some behavioral warning points that put him to the back of GT3 ahead of Andre Borodin, who's had a new chassis and a new engine. Uh, then in GT4, Josh Miller on pole alongside Jack Brown. Then it's Dan Vaughan in the McLaren, not Porsche for a change. Aston Miller alongside from Freddie Tomlinson and Harry George. Then you've got the BMWs, Carl Cavers and Michael Johnston, ahead of the Mustangs, Will Moore and Eric Evans. Then it's McLaren and Ginetta, Ian Goff and James Townsend, ahead of all Ginetta Row, Tom Holland and Ian Duggan. And McDermott's Mercedes is on the back row, and so also is the Kavijundu started car that didn't take part in qualifying because it needed a gearbox 
uh, replacement, a gearbox change, and the work being done on that meant they missed qualifying. So that is a rattle through the grid. We are about to see how it all unravels for round seven of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. First time the series has been to Portimao, and we are about to go racing with Miguel Ramos and James Cottingham on the front row of the grid. The two grids, the GT4 cars lag back just a little bit. The race director, Peter Daly, will give the instruction if he's happy for the race to get underway now, and he's blast off the McLaren of Miguel Ramos then steals the advantage, gets ahead of James Cottingham with Ian Loggy in the silver Mercedes, the reigning champion, having a look on the inside line as well as they drop down towards turn one. McLaren, Mercedes, Mercedes, Lamborghini because the Barwell number 78 car is up into fourth place. Then the quick starting Sean Balf sharing with Sandy Mitchell, who we heard from on the grid. Then it's Darren Lung and Andrew Howard, fifth and sixth BMW ahead of Aston Martin as they wriggle their way uphill for the first time out of turn four. It all looks clean so far in the pack as the GT4 battle rages on there. Dan Vaughan in the yellow McLaren, the Team Parker Racing Run Elite Motorsport owned car. This is the view from the Eric Evans, Matt Cowley, Mustang, Eric Evans at the wheel of it. Down at turn five, the GT3 leaders go through. Top two getting away just a little. Ramos there, the Portuguese driver, leads on home soil with James Cottingham, who's raced here in Historics. They tested here last week. He's got track knowledge. He's right up behind Ramos. Kevin Say goes through in number 93, McLaren. And the rest of the field then streams through for this first lap with the DTO McLaren number 36 there. That's the car with Aston Miller on the wheel of it, being forced a little bit wide. Eric Evans then crawling all over the back of number 22 BMW. Carl Cavers at the wheel, and he in turn is on the attack as well as the leaders come up through turn 12 for the first time. Three hours of racing, and it is McLaren leading the way. Mercedes second, Ramos not getting away from Cottingham. Ian Loggy dropped a length or two, perhaps, on this opening lap of the race. And then in fourth spot, as the cars come back into view, is Sean Balf in the Lamborghini from Barwell. Fifth is Darren Lung. Sixth there, Andrew Howard. Seventh behind him. Looks like being Mark Radcliffe, or possibly now Mark Smith, in fact, in his number 11 McLaren, has wriggled away up the order over the first few corners of the lap. But at the end of lap one, here they come, and it is going to be the McLaren in the lead there. Miguel Ramos leads the way. You're on board with Darren Lung, who comes across the line right on the tail of the Lamborghini. So, McLaren leads the way. Mercedes second. Ramos ahead of Cottingham. Gap back. Third is Ian Loggy. Fourth, coming into view, Sean Bell. Fifth, the red BMW of Darren Lung. And behind the GT3 traffic, of course, the GT4 battle. Here it comes, down towards turn one. And it looks rather... Mercedes dominated up at the front, but indeed it's an Aston Martin ahead of the Mercs just for the moment because you've got uh, the car of number 23, Josh Miller, at the head of GT4. They are racing Aston, then Harry George, and third, Dan Vaughan. To the inside there, number 62, Mustang, makes a big, big dive. That is Will Moore trying to get himself up past Freddie Tomlinson and the Ginetta force a little bit wide. That opens the door for Will to go through. Does it at turn two? Yes, it does. Mustang goes by Tomlinson way out wide over the kerb. He'll cry that he couldn't do anything else but go wide with a Mustang on the inside, but wide he was nonetheless. And so the 33 strong field works lap five. James Cottingham in second place now has done the fastest lap of the race and he's right with the leader. Side by side out of turn 13. Ramos fends him off. Marvin Kirchhofer for the McLaren, Johnny Adam for the Mercedes as the next drivers. And off the road goes 22. That's the Carl Cavers BMW. And I can't see that getting out of there. So Carl Cavers is off the road. And that's in the mid part of the lap. So Carl Cavers in the gravel. And if it can't get out, that could well be our first safety car trigger of the race. Let's see. Safety car for number 22 BMW of Carl Cavers. There it is. He's tried to dig it out as we were looking uh, at the efforts earlier on, but it's just not going to happen for him. So Carl Cavers stuck in the gravel. And uh, that takes that car out of the race and indeed there are early pit stops garage 59 and two c's both go for the pit lane with the lead car and then second and third mercedes so that's going to put sean balf into the lead interesting because quite often it's barwell that roll the dice on strategy but they've kept sean out at least for another lap so uh, in comes the brace of two c's mercedes trying to see whether they're going to do a driver change but I don't think they will. It's a bit early to do that. Also in, ah, oh, interesting, one of the Barwell Lambos in. Uh, so is Darren Lung. And Dan Harper is going to take over number 91. Look, so he's quickly on his toes. So one of the three mandatory stops ticked off here for a good number of the teams. So in has come Ramos, Cottingham, Loggy. Uh, Darren Leung is in as well. So is Andrew Howard. And you can see number 93 of Chris Froggett. He gives way to, uh, sorry. Kevin say to give way to Chris Froggett and when the car is unoccupied that means that there's fuel going in replay of the start you see what a good getaway it was from Miguel Ramos 
he took the advantage. And uh, Ian Loggy trying to get the move on the inside line against James Cottingham. Couldn't quite do that. James Cottingham holding his line on the outside, then swooping across to the apex. GT4 further back. Josh Miller converting pole position into the class lead as they got to turn two. Bit of hip and shoulder, John Ferguson on Mark Sansom. Through he went. That's where the damage was picked up, clearly. So that was uh, noted by race control, and it looks as though the road is pretty much clear. Oh, and that was the impact that Carl Cavers suffered at the back of the McLaren. We've had the first 20 minutes of the race that have absolutely flown by. Uh, number 22 BMW, by the way, that was in the gravel, is now in the pits, so as good as out of the race, sad to say. BMW goes through. Now, Dan Harper has chipped his way, hasn't he, already up past the two Mercedes, and now is right onto the back of Marvin Kirchhofer. Fastest lap of the race, Sandy Mitchell, number 78 Lamborghini, behind this battle pack as Kirchhofer gets up through the traffic. Dan Harper goes with him and gets right through the traffic, absolutely side by side for the lead, and they get past the GT4 battle as well, and Dan Harper takes over effectively the race lead, and the best of those that have made a pit stop is number 91 BMW. So it's Harper up front over Marvin Kirchhofer, and the BMW, really strong car on this kind of a circuit, illustrating exactly why everybody feared it pre-race. Picked off the McLaren, it's picked off the Mercedes, and now Dan Harper tries to get away. And the best of the GT4 cars that have made a pit stop is the number 23, Aston Martin, Seb Hopkins, now at the wheel of it. There it is. So at the moment, it's running seventh in GT4 silver, but it's the overall GT4 leader based on the fact that it's made a pit stop. I know it's all very confusing uh, with cars in the position that they're not really in because they'll give it up again, uh, but that Aston is the best placed GT4 pit stopper. In other words, we take its lead because once the cars we were looking at a moment ago pit, they'll fall back behind it. However, what they have to do now before they pit is try and lap quicker than this car so they don't drop too far behind it on their first regulation stop. And Dan Harper under investigation for safety car procedure. The race leader, there he is, Dan Harper. It's being looked at by race control. Puts a lap on number 90 McLaren, which is the Jack Brown Charles Clark car. That's a long way back now after its slow first stop. And also a bit of damage, I think, picked up with the Carl Cavers incident. It's effectively in last place now. So Dan Harper comes over the brow. Consul Apalainen is ahead, getting himself up through the traffic there, moving past the Ginetta. Gets up past James Townsend's car. And here comes Harper round the outside, out of turn six. Drops it down again into turn eight now. And that, number seven McLaren in trouble, is the car of Tom Rawlings that's on the inside, on the cut through at turn five. That's the one that's had all sorts of gearbox woes over the weekend, and that looks like its race is run. So number seven McLaren, sadly, out of the race. Been a really torrid weekend for them. And that car going no further, it seems, as here, Matt Cowley's Mustang, Eric Evans at the wheel, hustles on behind Will Moore. Oh, dear, flame now. So it gets worse and worse for number seven McLaren. This could be another neutralisation if that needs attending to, because Marshalls aren't going to be uh, easily able to get to that, I don't think. Now, this Mustang battle, and we go safety car again, safety car again. Uh, that Mustang battle is coming on strong, so second safety car after 10 laps from the first one. That's not 10 racing laps, that's 10 laps since it was deployed. So lap number 16, safety car two. Now, this brings again two Cs into the pit lane, get those stops done. So that's going to put Cottingham and Loggy back on board. Interesting strategy that they're employing. Dan Har and Mark Radcliffe is in this time as well. So Mark Radcliffe making his first pit stop to put Rob Bell in the car. And uh, out gets Johnny Adam. Well, that was brief, he thinks. And uh, Phil Keane, likewise. So these pit stops, 145 seconds. And uh, Ian Loggy thinking I'm very Time to take the helmet off. Going to get back on board. So the two C's team rolling the dice and others that have come in will be Nicky Team to give back to Andrew Howard and Martin Plowman to give back to Mark Smith. But not many of the GT3 field electing to do it this time, yet at least. 
Uh, now, this is what we saw at the time, and I was questioning whether Dan Harper should have been passing the traffic. Look, he swoops into the corner, gets past one, gets past two, gets past three that have just rejoined from the pits, and that's under safety car conditions. That's what's being looked at by race control, but not quite sure what the defence is there. I know they just rejoined, but one may be because of uh, overlapping one side of the white line, but the other two, uh, less easy to argue, I would have thought. And so race control are stretching the safety car period to give that second wave the chance to catch up, to make it fair, which is understandable. John Ferguson comes through the corner, getting ready to accelerate away. So too Mark Sanson, so too Lucky Carer. Everybody bunched up behind then. Matt Topham in the Aston, Ian Campbell as we get ready to go racing. Uh, behind him is the GT4 notional leader, Stuart Middleton, with one stop to his name. And we go back racing then. On lap 29, the green flags fly, and it's going to be John Ferguson who leads the way down towards turn one. But in the background, have a look for Miguel Ramos, have a look for Darren Lung, because they are trying to work their way through traffic. Ramos up the inside of Borodin as he dives down the straight. Nicky Tim gets up the inside. Sorry, Andrew Howard gets up the inside there, and Mark Smith fends him off, runs Smith out wide. Behind the pair of them is Ian Loggy. So back to green. James Cottingham sprints away because, look, the uh, GT3 opposition, Loggy, Howard, Smith, they've all got stuck in GT4 traffic. Here comes Andrew Howard, gets up the inside, makes his move, picks them all off. But, of course, with all the traffic bunched like this, safety cars can breed safety cars. So far, so good. They've all kept away from each other out of turn five and make the climb up the hill. So, Loggy to the inside line in number one, Mercedes. James Cottingham then out of turn six. There is Andrew Howard behind him and Howard in all of this has jumped Loggy, hasn't he? So the Aston Martin has got up past the number one Mercedes by the look of it. And I think also Mark Smith has gone through as well. Number 13, Lucky Carer pushing on, trying to make a move there against Mark Sansom. You've got Matt Topham, number 77, he's fourth. So John Ferguson edging away, but Cottingham is a man on a mission. He has caught right up to that leading quartet then. So James Cottingham ready to make a dive. Yes, on the inside up to turn 13. Gets up almost alongside the Aston. Ahead, Kera and Sansom go toe to toe. Here comes top and round the outside of Lucky Kera. Look back from Mark Sansom's Lamborghini. That is Lucky Kera number 13 on the inside. Matt Topham behind and James Cottingham behind all of them looking for a way through to the inside goes the McLaren three wide almost at turn 15. Cottingham on the inside, Topham round the outside. That is brave, brave, brave by Matt Topham. And James Cottingham squeezes up the inside. If ever you've seen a Mercedes, breathe in. That was the moment. Ferguson leads the way. Lucky Kera second. Third is James Cottingham, I think, just on the inside line. Breaks late into turn one. He's done it. So Cottingham goes through. Top of fends him off on the outside line. And James has to give way. He has to slot back in. I thought he might be able to stay on the inside line up to here. Turn three, but he couldn't do it. And all of these cars, remember, have done two stops. So they're all on a comparable strategy right now. Mark Sampson just falling back in the queue a little bit, got shuffled out of it. And Lucky Kera, very quick driver, even though he's not done much mileage here this weekend, it doesn't show, does it? So, as it says on the rear wing, the fastest Punjabi, right on the back of John Ferguson. And uh, Lucky Kera swarming all over the back of him now, looking for the race lead. Nose to tail these two. James Cottingham is the danger, though, in fourth place. See what he can do about Matt Topham. And John Ferguson is really under attack. Lucky Kera right behind him. Mercedes, McLaren, Aston, Mercedes in that lead battle pack. Cottingham comes over the brow up towards turn nine. Tries to get up the inside of Matt Topham. Can't do it, but it gives him the outside line for the approach for turn 10. That's not really the place to try, but the inside line for the 12 might be out of turn 11 here. Drop down the hill behind them. Mark Sanson is fifth and catching. Lucky Kera all over the back of John Ferguson, who's going to have to use his Formula Ford racecraft here like he did at Snetterton. Again, Matt Topham up the inside to try to take the second place away from Lucky Kera. He tries the outside line. We saw this a lap ago. Cottingham tried to buy into it then. He tries to do it again now. Kera, good exit speed. Topham flicks up the curb. Four for the race lead as they come now down towards turn 15. And Darren Lung, Dan Harper are getting a penalty. Let's just look at James Cottingham trying to make his move against Matt Topham, this is for third place as they come over the line. On the inside line is Cottingham. The Aston has got the grunt in a straight line. A 30-second stop-go penalty for the Lung and Harper BMW for overtaking under the safety car. There is Cottingham, and he still can't quite get past the Aston Martin down towards turn one. Great racing, this. It was a long time coming with that safety car period, but now we've got them back underway. 
great stuff. The AMs, especially here, in the leading places, Ferguson, Kerr, Topham, Cottingham, Sanson, Smith, uh, Chris Hart, seventh at the moment. So uh, having glad that Mercedes is still running at the pointy end, and Ramos is currently 10th. He and Loggy is ninth, but he lost out, really, on that restart, fell back quite a bit. So number 91, Darren Lung at the wheel of it, and he's going to have to serve a 30-second stop-go penalty because of Dan Harper overtaking under the safety cars we saw coming out of the pits into turn one. That's Loggy on the inside of Ian Campbell, but not able to go through, and Miguel Ramos has caught right up to him, and he's going to get past this Ian Woods. Contact with the Sky Tempest and McLaren. Round goes Ramos. And that was Kevin Say at the wheel of it. They tagged coming out of turn eight, and around goes Ramos just when he was going for a gap on the inside. Kevin Say had his nose there, the two touch, and around goes 88. So the garage 59, McLaren tapped into a spin. And Miguel Ramos now has to wait for a gap in the traffic, and that is going to be a long wait. This is Kevin Say's view. He went for the inside. Ramos came across the front. There's nowhere really that Kevin Say could go, I don't think, there. He was absolutely committed to the corner. And also in trouble, he's lucky Carer. He was second and he's had a spin at turn 13. So all of a sudden, McLaren's facing the wrong way. Two of them on the same lap. Different teams, but the outcome is the same. They both drop down the order. So lucky Carer is unlucky Carer. And that now means it's a Mercedes 1 2. Ferguson to Cottingham. Now, what's happened to Matt Topham? He's got damage. Look in the background. So maybe Topham got into Carer and turned him around. Certainly he's been delayed. Ferguson then for Ram Racing, team owner, Cottingham for two Cs, right up behind him. Mercedes 1-2, and John Ferguson knows how to drive a wide car. You don't win in Formula Ford 1600 without knowing how to make the car wide. He leads, Cottingham second, absolutely together, this eight-wheel Mercedes over the brow. Uh, we haven't touched, touched on GT4 for a while, but this is it, where you've got a change, because Matt Cowley there has just got ahead of 23. Uh, which is Josh Miller, and in turn, number 27 of Rob Bell, the GT3 McLaren, is in that mix as well, but he needs to get past them. Uh, I say Rob Bell, it's Mark Radcliffe now at the wheel, but uh, it was Rob Bell who brought the car in. Drama for Chris Hart, he was running fourth, and he's had a puncture by the look of it. You can see the uh, right rear corner does not look as it should. Uh, the Aston not losing anything on the aero, is it, despite the loss of bodywork. Through on the inside, and Matt Topham should be able to make the move here. He's alongside Mark Sansom in the... Lamborghini, he's got the inside line for turn three and breaks as late as he dares. Sansom, though, knows the road's going to come to him here on the turn four climb. So he's still got his nose in front. Top is going to get run out wide over the kerb, and he does. And Sansom stays for the moment in third place as again Ferguson leads Cottingham for third place. Big dive to the outside line. Matt Topham, and he has done it, has he? Almost, almost, almost. This is Kevin Say's view. He's fifth. Second in Silver Am to Sanson, who does lose out. Topham has done it. He's cleared him going into turn seven. So that's the change for third place. An hour and 40 minutes just under, still to run. And the nature of the circuit with lefts going into rights, delivering great racing all the way around. Cottingham fed up of staring at the back of Ferguson's Mercedes. Which way does he go next? The inside at turn 10. This should be the race lead, surely. He's got the inside line. John Ferguson goes wide, but then the road will come to him. He's got the inside line for the next corner and the one after it. It's left at 12, it's left at 13. Cottingham is ahead, though. He's done it right round the outside. Brilliant job done by James Cottingham, and he deserves that. He'd worked really, really hard for that. Great stuff. Cottingham leads, and now we'll see whether he can pull away. Matt Topham catching up to them anyway, as they're in GT4, 62 goes ahead. Matt Nichol jones ahead of Josh Miller. So that, for the moment, is going to give us Mustangs first and second of those that have made two pit stops, does it? Yes, because the two... Toro Verdi Ginettas uh, have only made one. Into the pits limped Chris Hart, so having said he was going well, I may have put the mockers on in there because that car is limping in. And an incident involving that car and 42, the Kel Campbell McLaren is being looked at, so that might account for where the puncture came from. What has happened to number 42? That's in ninth place, falling back a little bit. So number 61, Mustang, Matt Cowley at the wheel. The very successful Formula Ford racer really made a name for himself in GT4 cars. Still, sadly, flies under the radar a bit, but Matt is uh, a lot more better than people perhaps sometimes notice. And he knows this car inside out, going really nicely. New co-driver, yet another new co-driver for him for this year, Eric Evans. The Mustang second in GT4, 62, which has got Matt Nichol jones the man that runs Academy Motorsport, behind the wheel at the moment. And Ian Loggy is on his toes to try to get up past Matt Topham as they head into turn eight. Can't do it. 
Big slide though from the Aston, this is his chance. Gets the drive out of the corner, over the brow side by side. Loggy on the outside, but he's through already as they come into turn nine, job done. So through goes Ian Loggy, up into third spot now. John Ferguson is the next target. And number seven is being investigated now. Well, it doesn't matter, the car's out of the race. It was a pit lane infringement, but the car has uh, done something in the pits as through on the inside at turn 13 in traffic goes Ferguson. Loggy tries to squirt up the inside of Matt Cowley as well there and does so, so he's not giving anything away from Ferguson. Drive through penalty for number one. Ian Loggy has got a drive through penalty for track limit of offences, so the number one Mercedes gets the drive through and he's going to make the move for second place anyway down at turn five, but that's a bit of a Pyrrhic victory in a sense because Ian Loggy, although he's up into second place, is going to have to serve that drive through. There is the second of the Academy Mustangs coming in. So Matt Cowley to give way to Eric Evans. 62 has pitted. And now it's time for 61. Matt Cowley to give way. John Ferguson comes through. And behind look, Mark Sanson has got Kevin Say. Sean Balfe, intriguingly, not quite able to make a move against that McLaren. He's been there or thereabouts. Maybe the traffic got in the way on that lap, which is why he's lost a bit of ground. Tries to play catch up again as they head up towards turn 10, out of which James Cottingham has long since turned. So that's the race order with an hour and 12 on the clock and Matt Topham is determined to crack John Ferguson's Mercedes before he has to come into the pit lane and give way to Marcus Clutton. Side by side for second, and Topham has done it, heading into turn 15. Got a great exit from 14, he's up the kerb as well, but the damaged Aston Martin finally goes through. So Matt Topham has worked really, really hard for that second place, and that gives hope to Mark Sanson and Kevin Say behind as they now make the run over the line to see what they can do about the John Ferguson Mercedes ahead. We're getting a drive-through penalty for Ed McDermott for track limits, and that is James Cottingham's car being given over to Johnny Adams. So now Matt Topham finds himself in the lead of the race, short term, admittedly, because the car has to do its last pit stop, but Johnny Adam will take over to number four. Remember, it's got to make an extra 15 second pit stop. So fuel goes in, new driver goes in, possibly a new set of tyres, depending on how they've uh, taken the tyre strategy. Although the Mercedes, as Johnny was saying, pre-race relatively kind on the rubber. Meantime, Sanson has a go now to get past John Ferguson up the hill. Can't quite do it at six, wants to switch sides. And Kevin Say coming back at the pair of them. Number 23 here, Josh Miller, currently leading in GT4. But don't forget that car has an extra 10 seconds to serve uh, by way of compensation on the last pit stop, in addition to the extra 14 for being a silver entry anyway. So it's going to be a very long last stop for number 23. Safety car number three, and it's for the 56 Ginetta off the road at turn 15, as you can see. So the recovery vehicle is on its way. Oh, it's turn 14, forgive me, the approach to 15. So coming into Sagres, she's lost it. And around has gone the Ginetta. So the safety car scrambled. We're up to the Mercedes this time, and it has picked up, not the race leader, but it's got everybody under control. Uh, that's number 13 that is a scooped up, 13th place, you and Hanky. So that would be a wave by. The leading car is not that far behind. We're back to green then. So down towards turn one in the background. Look, Marcus Clutton comes up to have a go at Chris Froggart. Sandy Mitchell comes up to have a go at the pair of them on the inside line. He's got past one. Marcus Clutton makes the Aston Martin very, 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 very wide. But Sandy Mitchell goes through, goes wide. Clutton back through on the inside, almost rubs and the Aston retakes the place. Comes up out of turn four then, in a moment, the left-hander. So Clutton retakes the Lamborghini, but Sandy Mitchell served in 10 there, didn't he? Now, what about Raffaele Marciello? He's on the back of the McLaren of Martin Plam, and that means he's already got past Constant Lapa Linen, his regular Fanatec GT trackmate. And there on the inside of Plowy, he goes to try to gain the place up the inside line, and he's going to get that job done as well. So through he goes. Raffaele Marciello on the inside at six, but Martin Plowman stands his ground on the outside line. And then that's the inside for seven, but Marciello still is ahead, still does it. 
So that safety car period really helping number 23, negating their compensation pit stop. And in GT4, it is currently 86 Jeanette at the lead, but has a pit stop to serve. So the best of the three stoppers still, number 14, BMW, Chris Solkeld at the wheel of it, chased by 23, Aston Martin. But in GT3, number four leads the way. Johnny Adam trying to get away from Rob Bell, trying to get away in turn uh, from the pack behind. And there, Clutton versus Mitchell. Both having got themselves up past Chris Froggart on this lap, and Sandy Mitchell goes to the inside line. The road opens up for him as Marcus Classon goes a little bit wide. Up on the inside goes the Lamborghini, but the Aston stands its ground on the outside, absolutely toe-to-toe -to -toe out of the corner, heading up towards the timing line, dead set level. Sandy Mitchell with his foot almost through the floorboards as he tries to squeeze every last bit of power out of the Lamborghini almost touching mirrors as they go over the line. Look at the background, Tregertha and Marcello do exactly the same, down towards turn one, through on the inside line goes Sandy Mitchell, and Marcus Klassen gets a drive-through penalty for track limits. So the Aston Martin gets a drive-through there, alongside Tregertha goes Marcello. Can't do it. Will Tregertha has still got that drive-through to serve, remember? So I'm a bit fearful that sooner or later, Patience is going to be uh, lost by race control over this. Unless the team have got to argue about it, but it's unlikely to have got them very far. Bodywork peeling back on number 15. So Marcello rubs up against the traffic, but Will Tregertha proving to be a tough nut to crack here. Lello needs a gap on the inside line if he can do it. Heads up towards turn eight now. No way through there. Nose to tail. Now Marcello makes that move, gets the inside line, does he? Well, he's on the outside at nine, but the road will come to him if he can stand his ground over the brow of the hill into turn 10. Mercedes goes through. Raffaele Marcello has done it then. Gains the place, moves himself up past Will Tregertha. Next target is fifth place Chris Froggart. Bit of rubbing there, look as the Goff Wrigley McLaren falls back and past as well goes the Vaughan Meekin McLaren. Gets past one, gets past two because it also jumps ahead of Eric Evans. So that was brave stuff, but the McLaren is a lap down on those cars anyway. So Zach Meekin is only in 28th, whereas number 61 is in 16th place. And 29 is a lap down also. Tom Wrigley has dropped off the lead GT4 lap. So there's overtaking, there's lap rate, there's everything going on in GT4 right now. Number 50 Mercedes there you can see as well. That's the penalised car. That's got that stop go to do. And 72 under investigation, ignoring drive through penalty. So I've been banging on about it. And now the uh, race control message line comes up to query that. So the drive through was given, it has been ignored and uh, you get three passings, don't you, of the timing line once the penalty is issued. So 72 hasn't served it. Big dab of the brakes going up through uh, turn nine there for number 61 of Eric Evans. Just wonder whether late race, the brakes are starting to suffer a bit on the rather heavy Mustang. This, Dan Harper versus Raffaele Marcello. Dan Harper, full send up the inside, goes through. Up into fourth place goes the BMW, fantastic. Raffaele Marcello doesn't often lose a place, but he just has to Dan Harper, and he doesn't like it. Fights back on the inside line. Dan Harper, the BMW factory driver, does lose out. Raffaele Marcello, Mercedes factory peddler, back through on the inside line, but that was some move by Dan Harper. And if Raffaele wasn't conscious of Dan before, he is now, so he'll try it all over again with the Northern Irish. Remember, that was a great bit of driving. Just lost out at turn three, back through on the inside, came the Mercedes. And Raffaele Marcello, who did that fastest lap of the race on lap 14, back ahead then, back up into fourth place. Harper behind him, fifth, Frog at sixth. And Sandy Mitchell, as I say, is the man closing on the bell, Adam lead duo. So there, through turn one, goes Martin Plowman, still chasing after Chris Froggart. So the two McLarens. And the safety car restart of the car that we are on board with is under investigation. So Chris Froggart's safety car restart under investigation. And he loses a place. Martin Plowman dives through on the inside, going into turn five. Doesn't go out too wide, so that keeps him ahead as they accelerate up the hill now, heading towards turn six. Blast out of the corner. And it's turn eight. But I think now, in fairness, Martin Plowman is going to be able to edge away as the cars blast over the brow. Head 
runs through the right of turn 10. That's Chris Froggers at work. A very tall British driver. Folded inside the McLaren. Drops down the hill. Climbs to turn 13, down through the gears, hard through that sharp left. And then makes that run towards the end of the lap. Now 61, Mustang into the pit lane for its last pit stop. 72 track limit penalty to be investigated after the race, we're told. So they've ignored the, the drive through, but are disputing it clearly. So this is the Mustang that has been in the lead of the class. This will drop it back and therefore the what was de facto class leading BMW is the class leading BMW with a margin of eight seconds. But the gap is coming down. Solkeld to Seb Hopkins, their number 14 BMW still leading in GT4 and uh, also is the leading Pro-Am GT4. That means, of course, that it's saved 14 seconds on its last pit stop to put it into the lead over and above the 23 Aston. Through there goes number 50, that's James Wallace in the Mercedes that did briefly lead during a safety car period, then had that puncture. And off the road has gone Ignacio Zanon. So the Ginetta gets going again. Rejoins then now down up to turn 12 and coming through with the back marking Darren Burt Mercedes just splitting them temporarily. Now Sandy Mitchell gets past and then Rob Bell has a back marker to get through as well. Right, so he's done it. There's another car there. There's that 23 Aston. It's got a problem, hasn't it? Now is that, yes, that's got involved with the Ginetta, I reckon. Look at this damage on the front of the 23 Aston Martin that's been chasing for GT4 honours. And now heading for the pit lane, number 23, Seb Hopkins down the pit lane. So he's been trying to play catch up against the BMW. We've had a Ginetta off the road. We've got an Aston with damage. I think the two things are related. And this changes the GT4 situation completely, doesn't it? Down the pit lane comes number 23. Damage on that front left corner. So the Aston Martin heads down the pit road. And presumably it is more than just bodywork damage if the car is in the pit lane. And if therefore it's something that serious, like suspension damage, then it rather looks like it could be the end of the race. The incident's in, under investigation and it's confirmed that it was the Aston and the Ginetta. So uh, we saw one stranded, we've seen the other with damage and it's taken a big whack on that left front corner seemingly. So that means now that Chris Solkeld is being chased by Darren Burke in GT4 and he's got a little bit more of a gap, 6.7 seconds over the Mercedes. Nafia Zanon into the pit lane. So that car tries to sort out its damage. That'll be investigated after the race. As over the line on to the last lap goes Johnny Adam. Three seconds to the good now over Rob Bell. So he's built the gap back up again. And for second place, well, Sandy Mitchell still, still, still trying, isn't he? Rob Bell, not to be denied, I don't think, for another good result for the Optimum McLaren. So they had third at Silverstone. They got a third at Snetterton. This would be the best of the season for Rob and for Mark Radcliffe if they can hang on to it. Raffaele Marcello is almost with them. They're now on this last lap of the three hours up the hill they head. This car has got another lap to run after the one it's on. It's the number 14 BMW. And uh, Chris Solkeld and Michael Johnston look as though a win is heading their way because although Darren Burke is close, he's not getting close enough with a lap to run. Up towards the chequered flag, it's going to be a 19th record equaling win for Johnny Adam. It's going to be the third of the season. It's going to be victory in round seven of the Intelligent Money British GT Championship for Johnny Adam and James Cottingham here at Portimao. And there, the Ginetta sheds a tyre ahead of them as it goes across the line onto its last lap. 86, that's the car that was third in class. That's Mike Simpson, third in GT4 outright. And he's had a tyre blow, as you can see, coming over the line. Number 14, BMW, Chris Solkeld with Darren Burke a bit closer, but not close enough to challenge. He's on his way up towards the line. Here they come. It's been a race of changing fortunes all the way in the GT4 battle. And the BMW is going to score class honours there. Michael Johnston and Chris Solkeld win in GT4 to the delight of all concerned. Recipe for success or something from Ainsley Harriet there. As over the line comes the BMW then to win from uh, Harry George and Darren Burke second in GT4. Race results, very provisional though. James Cottingham and Johnny Adam win here at Portimao from Rob Bell and Mark Radcliffe, and then Sean Balfe and Sandy Mitchell in third. Fourth to Raffaele Marcello 
along with John Ferguson, ahead of Dan Harper and Darren Lung. Then it's Phil Keane and Ian Loggy, sixth. Seventh, really good result this, really surprising to be fair. Constant Lapalina and Tim Creswick ahead of Matt Topham and Marcus Clatton, who got a penalty. Mark Sansom and Will Tregertha have a penalty looming over them, but Chris Froggart and Kevin Say rounded out the top ten. GT4 honours to Michael Johnston and Chris Solkeld, ahead of Harry George and Darren Burke, with Aston Miller and Josh Rowledge in third overall. I am here with the winners of uh, this fantastic race. James, we spoke earlier uh, about how uh, incredibly you were doing and what a challenge it was, but this is the third win of the season and it's got to feel good. Yeah, delighted, you know, to, to have a penalty at the previous round and then come and win is yeah, it's super rare, really hard to do. So, so, so pleased. Uh, big thank you to obviously all the sponsors and the guys who support us. And of course, two C's who've done a mega job this weekend. And finally, obviously Johnny, uh, give me the pace and, uh, you know, doing a perfect job and keeping out of trouble and keeping it in the right position. And Johnny, congratulations to you. Equally, Phil Keen on the most wins. Uh, it's got to feel good. That was a, a pretty strong final stint from you. Yeah, I mean, the cars felt really good in the race there. The team have done, as James touched on, a great job all, uh, all weekend. And Graham, um, uh, James's stint was superb. You know, his, his pass on uh, Ferguson was pretty pretty special. You know, to get the lead and then pull away was what we needed for the pit stop, you know, to come out and lead. So, uh, great for the championship. I am joined by Chris Salkeld, who has accepted multiple celebrations. GT4 overall winner. Congratulations. That's the first GT4 overall win for BMW as well. So it's got to feel sweet for you and for the team. Yeah, it's an it's unbelievable feeling. It's my first ever win in British GT. First win for BMW in the new car. It's sensational. Honestly, this weekend when we came into it, when we saw the balance of performance, we never thought it was possible. But again, a huge testimony to BMW for building an unbelievable car that's got great tyre degradation. So... Yeah, holding off, holding off these boys at the end was difficult, but oh, it's the best feeling in the world. James Cottingham, Johnny Adam win the Intelligent Money British GT Championship race. Three hours of it at the Autodromo de Algarve. And the first time the championship has raced here, they make history by being the first winners then of a British GT round on Portuguese time. So happy scenes on the podium. How does this make the championship look after round seven? Johnny Adam and James Cottingham extend that lead over Darren Lung and Dan Harper with Ian Loggy and uh, then Sean Balfe behind him. Ian Loggy, remember, soloist on those points because he's now had two different co-drivers. Sean Balfe and Sandy Mitchell are behind him ahead of John Ferguson and Raffaele Marciello and the currently stateside of Jules Gounon is sixth. Mark Radcliffe and Rob Bell seventh after that second place today. Champagne set to be sprayed and what a race it turned out to be. Great stuff from the Intelligent Money British GT Championship. There's plenty more to come before the end of the season with Brands Hatch and that Donington decider. Thanks for your company then here at Portimao. We'll see you next time. But for now, from Steph Wentworth and from David Addison, it's goodbye from Portugal.